Hello and welcome to New Frontiers on CCTV International. I'm Ji Xiaojun in Beijing. In today's program, we are continuing our investigation into the history and development of Chinese porcelain. Hongshan in Jiangsu Province is one of the most famous archaeological sites in all of China. The name is associated in particular with porcelain. However, for a long time, archaeologists were puzzled by one burning question. It was, where had the vast trove of ancient silicon found at Hongshan come from? There was no sign of any kiln in the Hongshan area. Well, exhaustive inquiries eventually uncovered a link between the Hongshan porcelain and the place called Deqing in neighboring Zhejiang province. During a construction project in Hongshan Wuxi municipality, a large burial ground of aristocrats of the state of Yu was found. During the archaeological rescue work that followed, scientists unearthed no less than seven tombs. It was a truly sensational find that would be listed as one of the ten major archaeological discoveries of 2004. Over a thousand burial objects were brought to light, among them around 400 celadon objects that had been owned by aristocratic families in ancient times. Yeah,大多数在这样都发现过,但是像这样的完整的,完整的一套组合,那么还是第一次。同时呢,还出现了以前这样没有发现过,从来没有,从未见过的一些情之气。那么从这个角度,一来看的话呢,这个是应该说是
以这也是我们要当时要想考虑解决的一个问题之一，就是这么好的青瓷器是在哪儿烧制的？那么如果不把这个问题解决了，那么对这个瓷器的下边深入的研究呢，也是个障碍，最大的障碍。所以呃，关于这一点呢，我们也一方面是查阅资料，一方面进行了一些调查。In June 2005, the Jiangsu Archaeological Institute invited scholars from Zhejiang Province to examine their finds amid tight security. Those who gathered for the meeting could never have anticipated that the question about the birthplace of these objects, a question that had puzzled Jiangsu people for some time, would be answered in the most unexpected way. Uh, 去看那个红山大墓出土的那一批原始青瓷的礼器乐器，一进门啊，一看有一种似曾相识的感觉。这批礼器乐器啊，我非常眼熟。呃，早在一九八六年，我写报告的写那个德清原始青瓷窑址调查的时候，就已经有这里面有有一些那个钟啊、纯啊这些标本，所以非常熟悉。呃，当时就邀请张明先生到德清来，非常着急，来的越越早越好。结果他来了，来了以后，我们基本上就可以断定这批东西是德清生产的。因为这里的这个有一些，刚才说有一些瓷器是在浙江省很少见到的，就以往的呃出土的瓷器当中很少见到的，当时在红山出土了。那么通过调查呢，在采在浙江的德清也发现同类的瓷片。所以我们基本上是根据德清的这个采集到的这种碎片和红山的同类去进行做对一对一的进行对比对，器型啊进行比对，所以我们初步判断认定呢，这个红山越过贵春部出土的这些高档的青瓷器呢，可能是应该是在德清这一带呢烧制烧制的。The similarities between the porcelain unearthed at Hongshan. And the finds in Deqing led archaeologists to conclude that the Hongshan porcelain had been made in Deqing. Still, it would take laboratory tests to confirm the assertion. Many of the objects unearthed in Hongshan were clearly for large-scale ritual ceremonies or used as burial objects for aristocrats. They were either special containers or musical instruments. For the archaeologists, this was a revelation. As it had long been assumed that celadon objects had only been used in everyday life, more commonly than not, objects for such special purposes were made by exclusive kilns, and replication of such objects by other kilns was strictly forbidden. As the shape and design of these objects was unique, it was possible to determine exactly which kiln had made them. One of these two items came from Hongshan, the other from Deqing. Both feature engravings of leaves on their necks, and the leaves on both are very similar. Perhaps this design was once a totem of some ancient tribe, or perhaps it was simply a hallmark design of the particular kiln that produced these valuable items. A very large porcelain object in an eerie shape, unearthed in Deqing, had long puzzled Zhejiang archaeologists. What was it for? The mystery was solved through the finds made in Hongshan. This unusual object was once the base for an Aeolian drum. Porcelain Aeolian bells were found at the Hongshan site, and even today they produce very pleasant sounds when placed in the presence of a breeze. Aeolian bells in excellent condition have also been unearthed in Deqian. The fact is that objects unearthed in Hongshan, large and small, have their cousins in Deqian, whether they be pots, bells, mirrors, or large containers. They share numerous similarities in shape and decoration.
Hong Shan is located in the south of Jiangsu province, around 100 kilometers from Deqing in Zhejiang province. Due to the area's abundance of rivers, ancient people would have had no difficulty engaging in transportation and trade over such a distance. Everything on hand points to an indisputable fact. The Celadon objects found in Hongshan, Jiangsu province were made in the ancient kilns of Deqing in Zhejiang province. To archaeologists, visual observation is always important in order to determine a fact, but they also need to run lab tests. In 2006, archaeology departments in both Jiangsu and Zhejiang sent samples of their finds to the Shanghai Silicate Institute, part of the China Academy of Sciences. The institute, equipped with the latest instruments and technology, is able to carry out the most advanced tests on ancient porcelain. The tests carried out at the institute followed internationally recognized procedures. By measuring trace elements through a chemical process, the tests could determine what the eye could not. The much anticipated results are yet to be announced. But when the results come through, they will provide the final answers to a number of questions. Foremost among these concern the origin of the Celadon found in Hongshan and whether they are the earliest examples yet found of mature Celadon. Is the established history of China's Celadon production in place for more than 50 years about to be rewritten? If so, how? When and where was China's Celadon born? How many more secrets has history withheld from us concerning the evolution of China's Celadon? For generations, Celadon scholars have had no rest because of these questions. Little wonder then that they are anxious.